Welcome back to the Deep Dig Sports Pod. I'm your host, Shrew, my other host right over there. What's up? It's D. Good to see you again. Be sure to hit that like button, drop some comments below, but more importantly, be sure to subscribe. Please. We're trying to hit 500. We're on our way. We're right there. We're right there. But let's let's just dig right in. We know why you're here. Top 25 shake up. We're doing our weekly ranking show where we talk about the top 25. Texas. Texas had to have the best off week out of everyone in the country. Just sit back, watch everyone at the top topple down, and you're back. You're your top dog again. Yeah, I mean, this is the perfect bye week for them. It was, again, a sleepy week six, and people were like, okay, this is not – like." I'm going to gear up for next week because week seven is the one where everyone got into arguments about if you should schedule your wedding on this week. And this is like big matchup after big matchup. But week six saw a huge shakeup. A bunch of rake teams ended up losing. So Texas ended up just winning just by having to buy. Yeah. So Texas moves up to number one. We got Ohio state moving up to number two, both, both. And then Oregon, Three, these three teams, interesting weeks right now. Texas goes against a Oklahoma team who we thought was going to start to fall off pretty hard. But, I mean, they only have one loss on the season. If they win this game, they jump right back into things. Ohio State and Oregon play for the number two and number three spot. I don't know which way to lean with this game. I think I'm going to lean Ohio State because do I believe in Dylan Gabriel to the fullest? No. I think, honestly, so okay. So Texas, Oklahoma, we were thinking that this is going to be like a shitty matchup the way Oklahoma lost to Tennessee. But now with the way that the, like the SEC has ended up shaking up, Vanderbilt beats the number one Alabama after Alabama beats Georgia. Pretty much all the top dogs besides Texas have one loss. And if you're Oklahoma, you're looking at this game as why not us? If we knock off Texas, we prove that we are one of the top teams in the SEC and we can make a run at winning this, possibly winning this conference. So that has a lot of weight to it. Ohio State and Oregon is going to be crazy, dude. I think that this is obviously the first real big test for Ohio State. Obviously, this Oregon team struggled at the beginning of the year. They're looking back to form. I I, this could go either way for me, but I think Ohio State just has a little bit more weapons and you feel a little bit better about that defense. So I'm leaning towards Ohio State. Yeah, SC is going to get interesting because I think Texas still has to play, what, Bama? They still have uh, to play Bama. Do they, they play, play Tennessee? Tennessee. So it, it's going to get shaken up even more as we go further. And Penn State versus USC, team that definitely is having a disappointing season now compared to where they're minds were in the first two weeks they're starting to come back down to earth can usc kind of claw their way back with this win or you think penn state just you know puts them away uh it got moved over yeah. but i think that uh penn state puts them away i think they penn state they're on a mission as well they proved last year that they should have been in that like kind of a mix but they couldn't beat the top dogs in ohio state and michigan i think that they're going to continue to prove like hey we are for real. Let's stomp out USC. Let's let's get up this ranking because we know that one spot is going to be available at least in that two and three matchup. We know that one of them is going to drop so we can continue to climb up this ladder. Yeah, and as long as they keep staying near the top, even if they do lose a game so at some point in the season, I think they could still work their way back in. And then we have Georgia versus Mississippi State. I think that's a pretty solid win, easy win for them. Uh, Miami. Controversy with Miami because the week before, was it a touchdown? Was it incomplete? Uh, they overturned it. Miami gets the win in the, in the end. This game, targeting. Everyone in the country is saying that's a blatant targeting call. Cal Berkeley, who went crazy for college game day. The Bay out here was active. And I can't even imagine the, what the parties would have been like if they won this game. But Cal Berkeley had them on the ropes up 25. And then in the end, if they get that targeting call against Miami, I think they run out the clock and win it. So, I mean, props to Cam Ward. Everyone's calling it a Heisman moment for him coming back from so uh, such a big deficit. But how real is this Miami team if they were down so much to a Cal Berkeley team? I, I think that they're probably the biggest – 
they're on pretender watch moving forward throughout the rest of the season. But honestly, they have a pretty weak schedule uh, this week. They have a bye. But I mean, looking at the ACC again, I think that the them struggling these past two weeks only has Clemson licking their chops. Like, OK, w- we know that if we play a physical style, we can beat this Miami team. We can get them to fall behind. And if if we get them to fall behind, we are not going to be Cal Berkeley. We're Clemson. We're going to we're going to finish it out. We're going to stomp them out. Yeah, and I think Cal's main downfall was they can't throw the ball as consistently. And with Cade Klubnik at Clemson, I think he's going to air it out if they're up. And Miami, if you take away the big plays on Miami's offense, they can't really drive down the field and make dink and dunk plays. It's either highlight reel or they're, they're punting or turning it over. And I think that could be the downfall where I think Clemson definitely is back in this thing. But Miami just has such an easy schedule. I mean, they play Louisville next week. And we saw Louisville isn't as real as they really hope to be. I don't even know if they're ranked anymore. I mean, I'll see at the end of this list. I don't think they are. Yeah. After that loss to SMU last week. So Bama falls down six spots to number seven. Tennessee falls down four to number eight. Bama, did you see Vanderbilt stormed the field, took the field goal post, walked it three miles to a river and dropped it in. And uh, Vanderbilt, just crazy. They're they're effing lit, according to uh, their quarterback, Pavia. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. (laughs) But I want to take a second. I ate crow last week when Bama beat Georgia. I'm going to take it all back. Fuck this. Yo, I (laughs) knew that they were going to lose a game that they were not supposed to. After the South Florida game, I fucking said it. I was like, dude, this team, there's something about like, yeah, they blew them out, but it came down to South Florida's quarter or uh, South Florida's coach being a pussy and not going for it on fourth and goal, and that ended up a chain reaction. They end up looking; it looks like a blowout, but realistically, they were down, I think, three or four, and they go for it. Like that was stupid, and I knew that they were going to lose a game. Jalen Miro looked like shit this game. I'm taking it, uh, everything I said last week. I'm taking it back. Yeah, they're still electric. Yeah, they're still one of the best teams in the SEC. But I fucking knew that they were going to lose a game that they weren't supposed to. And is Kalen DeBoer the guy? Because there's rumblings right now from the fan base, from just college football fans in general, that he is not tough enough on this team. We're in the NIL era where they're kind of, you know, running shit. And was it Malachi Moore? Yes. Going insane, throwing fits on the field, doing stupid shit. And Kalen comes out being giving him a glowing review oh, he's a great guy. Oh, he stayed and helped keep this program going. We're not going to suspend him. And everyone's like, dude, what the fuck? Like, oh, yeah, I can't suspend this guy because he stayed to help my football team. I I don't know. I don't, I, I maybe would have, you know, benched him for a half, a, a game. Yeah, well, dude, why? Like, okay, he went, and it wasn't just one outburst. He had – it was like a solid three minute clip where he's just fucking on the field bitching. Well, then, well, first off, it starts with him slamming the the guy's head, the Vanderbilt player's head. Then he throws his fucking mouthpiece. Then he kicks the ball as the ref is setting it. You and after pull him trying at that to get point. him off of the field, the defensive coordinator comes a pretty long way. They're trying to get him off the field. He waves off the guy and says, basically, fuck off. And he stayed on the field. But he's a great guy. But he's like, oh, that, that's why he has the C on his chest. Like, dude, that's the type of shit that makes people not take you seriously. If you're Kalen DeBoer, you have to tell him you're sitting. And we, I probably would have taken the captainship off of him for at least two weeks. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I, if Kalen DeBoer loses another game, like, can he hold this Bama squad together in the locker room? Like, there were there were cracks just from them losing one game. And who do they play this week? They play uh South Carolina, who got destroyed this past week. So by Ole Miss, yep. This could definitely a bounce back game, but I mean we've seen the the D line for South Carolina is nasty. The quarterback dual threat can make some plays. The running back's great. They have a good receiver. So I mean anything can happen in the SEC. We saw and Bama just needs to have a bounce back game for the sake of Kalen DeBoer. Yeah, for real. Tennessee gets an easier matchup against Florida. I think they're going to – here's the thing. The the commentators, everyone was like, 
oh, Nico, the quarterback at Tennessee, he's so clutch. He has ice in his veins. Bro, he fumbled a snap in the last drive, and then he can't even get a throw off on the final play of the game. He was shook. They had no sense of urgency in that fourth quarter to try to, you know, move down the field quickly and get the score. I know they let him score at the end. I'm okay with that. But once you get that, they they kind of had this, this attitude about them like, we know we're going to win. Like, don't worry. We'll get the ball back and we'll win. It doesn't even matter. But Arkansas came to play. Arkansas is not a bad team. Like, realistically, Arkansas just has bad coaching. But they have talent at every position. They are – they're – a good team, but a poorly coached team. That's why Sam Pittman should be out there. Bobby Petrino steps in after he you know, basically says F you to Arkansas and comes back. And that's actually improved the team quite a bit. But they're really, really talented. And they see, they've they played in the SEC for a really long time. And they know like, okay, well, we're here. We, we can compete any given week. I think that as a, as a collective, as a fo- college football collective, we are all so quick to be like, this is the next guy. And I'm guilty of it. I I know I'm, I'm, I was saying that about Dylan Rayola and I still think Dylan Rayola is going to be an excellent quarterback, but you look at it when Nico stepped on and had a, a, again, a great start of the season, but he is also a red shirt freshman. He has not been in these spots. And this was a game that had high intensity, and I think he's still going to be a very, very good quarterback, but he's only going to get better because he's going to be put in these positions. And I think that this was a position that for a guy that hasn't played a lot of snaps in the SEC, it was very important for him to see like what it is actually like to be on the road, to face adversity. And he just wasn't up for it on this given week, but I think moving forward, he will, you know, start to shape up. But yeah, I mean, I he just he looked like a, a young quarterback. Yeah, and they also had like three banged up receivers, offensive line injuries, so it was tough sledding for them. And and that's why I felt like they they had the confidence about them when it was like, no, nah, we should be a little more urgent. Like, it's not going your way tonight. You're not putting up seventy points, and also you have injuries. Like, let's try to get this going and not just be walking around letting time slip away. So. We'll, we'll yeah. see. They're definitely going to have a bounce back, but can the, it, it worries me that they don't have the quarterback this season to compete in the SEC for you know that top spot. But we'll we'll see. We got Ole Miss at nine, and Jackson Dart has to be the happiest person in all of college football because now his fuck up loss to Kentucky kind of gets a little bit washed away with all these other top SEC teams losing. So he's right back in the conversation of getting this team at the top of the sec yeah no this is realistically a brand this is a brand new week and this is a brand new season for the sec alabama losing to vanderbilt washes away every single one loss team's sins it is like the a rebirth and they are like okay we have a chance to go for it now you look around oklahoma one loss ole miss one loss uh Even Kentucky, you're like, okay, we have two losses, but we feel pretty good because we've knocked off Ole Miss. Like, it kind of puts a a wrench into things, and I don't think anyone has really separated themselves. Even Texas has a a lot. Like, you look at Texas, and you're like, okay, they're number one, but they have a really tough schedule ahead of them. Can they hold up? This is their first time in the SEC. So I think that, again, you kind of – you said it perfect. Like, this is – Perfect. This is a like Jackson Dart again. Mm, like perfect. This is a, a big bounce back scenario for them to 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 really make a deep run at it. Yeah, and I will say LSU. I mean, we're skipping ahead a bit, but at thirteen, they're also one loss, and they play Ole Miss this week. That game has big implications on where each of these teams' seasons will go from here on out. Yeah, I think this is a truly. I think more for LSU rather than Ole Miss. I think this is for LSU. This is a must win game if they do not win this game you can go ahead and put them away for the season i don't think they're a good good they're a good enough team to get more wins if they can't beat Ole miss yeah and then obviously we got clemson at 10 who season looked kind of bleak when they had that loss but now things are definitely turning around i think they definitely can win the acc iowa state i mean do you even 
should we even put them higher on this list? Because they're looking amazing this season. They move up five spots to number 11. They have West Virginia this week. I think Iowa State is going to keep running through this Big 12. Yeah, I think so. I think that they're the most, it's them and BYU that are the most consistent in the Big 12 and that you feel really good about. Uh, uh, BYU at the 14 spot. I think you feel really good if you're Iowa State and BYU about how you're going for the, the course of this season. And I think that going against West Virginia is a sneaky team. They were really hyped in the in the offseason, but they've really underachieved. And so if you're Iowa State, don't look past them on the schedule, but I, I have them slated for a win this week. Yeah, and Big 12 is exciting this year. I think we're definitely going to get a, a good team out of the Big 12 this year. BYU has been you know doing a lot more than I thought they were going to do. Iowa State looking impressed. I think Iowa State can compete with most of these teams at the top here. I'm feeling really good about them. So, I mean, I'm excited to see a matchup between BYU and Iowa State at some point. I don't know if they play in the regular season, but can we get a conference game? Yeah, and then we got Notre Dame at 11. I mean, I think they could just keep walking through their schedule. Stanford has some players, but I don't think they're as good as Notre Dame. I think a sneaky Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to stop right there. Yeah. Notre Dame at 11. Okay, the second biggest winner from this past week has to be Notre Dame. Because the more that Texas A&M continues to prove that they are a good team, the better and better that that win at A&M continues to look. And it could just be like the win that puts them over the edge after that dog shit loss to Northern Illinois. But Notre Dame does have to run through two buzzsaws this year in Army and Navy. so And they're taking on USC. So... I mean, they could drop it. One more loss, I think, takes Notre Dame out of it. But again, like build resume wise, if you're going to put Texas A&M up there, which A&M crazy, they were unranked last week. They were ranked at 23 the week before and got a win and went unranked, which was pretty crazy. But then they beat the number nine team in the nation. That win over Texas A&M on a national stage in prime time was was awesome and i think that that if they can win out notre dame is in in the playoff automatically yeah and speaking of AM, I think this AM team is really good this year yeah they lost to notre dame but they're looking great the offense especially getting the quarterback back the defense is looking so i think they're just a well-rounded team and i think they can compete with anyone in this sec at any week yeah and this is the perfect week for a buy i mean i'm not a big connor wegman fan i think marcel reed is obviously the future there, but Connor Wigman stepped back in after being injured and was like, okay, you know what? I know I hear the hype. Let me just go out there and play a solid game of football. And that's all was needed again. Like they had Missouri had no shot and I'm not surprised that they've skyrocketed up this uh, rankings because they deserve it. Yeah. And where, where am I at here? Because Utah continues to do their thing. I think they should be Arizona state Boise state climbing up the boards I think Boise State, they don't have a strong schedule going forward. Like UNLV is not ranked anymore on their schedule. They end on Oregon State. Other than that, it's not much. Their one loss this year is a three-point loss to Oregon, 34-37. They have Genty back there just dominating. I think he's running away with the Heisman easily right now. Can, I think Boise State is going to finish top 10. I think they have a real chance to. Again, and it's so crazy to see what Genty is doing. And again, they've not played like cupcake schedule. Like again, that Oregon game, they took them to overtime. And as they start to get deeper into this conference, I don't think this conference can hold what Genty would. They can't pick up what Genty's putting down. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they're going to run through this, this mountain West. And I think that you're right. I think they end up finishing top 10. Yeah. And then we got Kansas state. I mean, a big game against Colorado. This is going to determine who's real right now. Is it Colorado actually going to compete, maybe jump into the rankings? Is Kansas State going to keep on winning and be a real threat to the Big 12 title? The thing with Kansas State is Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson has had such a fluctuation in play that I you just don't know what Kansas State team is going to step out on the field. Has he solved it all? Because we thought that a little bit earlier in the season, and then he goes out and throws a dud. So can they go out and just be consistent and be consistently good? Or is it going to be all season a roller coaster? And if so, can Colorado take advantage of that? Because Colorado has figured out, hey, 
we've got a, an offensive line. All those guys that transferred are actually pretty good, and we can establish the run, and that will help out Shador a ton. And if they can do that, play bully ball, get a, get some uh, over the top, and then on defense, just let Travis Hunter – like if you get a lead on Kansas, we've seen Avery Johnson will throw picks. So be on the lookout for that. That's a sneaky like upset alert. Be on the aware, aware for that. Yeah, and uh, Indiana, I think – Let's put some more respect on Indiana's name. I think they should be higher on this list, but if they get a win against Nebraska, like I think that solidifies that this team's pretty real this year. Yeah, again, I think that the bye week this week is perfect. Like again, you the only like perfect bye weeks come when you're undefeated. Indiana is undefeated. That gives them another week to gear up for Nebraska. I think that Nebraska has shown that they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. I don't know about this season, but in the like next three years, you will hear from in uh, from Nebraska, but Indiana. I mean, Coach Sig, all he does is win, baby. Yeah, all he does is win. Google him, and then we Google have him. Missouri dropping twelve spots. I think even if they they're winning UMass, is like just keep them at the bottom. They they are not deserving of a top fifteen spot in this list. Their schedule again is so weak compared to everyone else at the top half of the SEC. I think that. They are going to continue to climb up the ranks, but I don't think it's deserved. I think we've seen what happens when you they face uh, not even at the top of the tier. Like oh, uh, Texas A and M is a is a solid team, but they're not the one of the best. They're not Texas. They're not Georgia. They're not Alabama, and they just got smoked. Like I think we should have just taken Missouri out of the rankings completely. I think the only reason they're in there is because they were the one uh, really ranked high during the preseason, but. We should not rank these teams until we see a game or two from each of them because then you have dumb shit like this where Missouri is ranked in the 10 or 9 spot. Uh, Michigan was ranked at the number 10 spot and was a uh, was an underdog to Washington. So I just think you have dumb things like that where it's like we know this is not a good team. Everybody knows it's not a good team, but you have to keep them up there because we ranked them in the preseason. Yeah, and then we got Pittsburgh at 22, having a quiet, undefeated season right now. I mean, one-point win against Cincinnati, four-point win against West Virginia. They got Cal this week, one of the top defenses in the country. Then they play Syracuse, SMU. They have Clemson, Louisville, Boston College. Like, I think I enjoy a lot of last Pittsburgh because it's going to be tough sledding from here on out. And then Illinois, who also looks really solid this year, playing Purdue. I mean, I think it should be a good game, but Illinois, if you want to continue to be – Taken seriously in the Big Ten, you got to win this game. Michigan drops 14 spots, de- deservedly so. Next week, they'll play Illinois. And that, that should be an exciting game because Michigan, what are you going to do at quarterback? And Illinois, if you are going to compete for this Big Ten, you can take Michigan completely out of the conversation with this win. Yeah, exactly. We've seen Michigan now play three different quarterbacks, and they still don't have an answer as far as what they're going to do. I think that we're going to see them fall out of the rankings. I think Illinois is actually for real. And I think that this sets up a really big matchup going to Illinois. I think that you're going to see the crowd go wild. I think that that's going to be pretty crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if Michigan falls out of the ranking, even though they have a bye week this week, because there's just people chomping at the bit to get up here. Yeah. And then SMU rounds out the list. Others receive votes Uh, that USC not on the list. Uh, Navy Army. Navy Army still not on there. Vandy getting some sim love. Uh, Cuse is not on there. Washington, Louisville falls off. Colorado, not not getting any love despite only one loss. They only have three votes, and Kentucky only with one. So, I, a lot of these teams I think could work their way in and not just work their way in, but get pretty high in the rankings. Yeah, and I think. Syracuse should be ranked just because they did knock off number 25 UNLV. And I think that that was a good back and forth game, but I think it shows you kind of where the other conferences are, where this team that was looking to make a huge run, that was going to be like, Oh, this is, this could be a top dog and and this could get a first round by in the, the college football playoff. They can't beat just a mid tier big 10 team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, we got, we're running out of time here, but we'll talk about all this next week when we see the new rankings and we're going to talk college football this weekend once we see some games. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you're here for that.
Go and like and comment, and we'll see you next time. Later.